Hello everyone and welcome back to Deadly Premonition. Let's get a little bit of a recap, shall we? Previously during the investigation, these puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. Welcome to Green. I'm Sheriff George Woodman. Call me George. There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zach? My coffee warned me about it. It's broken. I've been using that one for a long time. Why didn't you get it repaired? This TV is important to you, right? It's got some memories attached to it, sure. I used to watch movies on this thing with your grandma all the time. Grandma liked movies? Of course she did. Everyone loves movies, right? I love movies, too. I've never been to a movie theater, though. Oh, okay. So the first day of the investigation and straight away, what's this? Angel Isaac? Oh, another. it's another trading card. Okay, that's number 14. I haven't missed 13, have I? Cheers. Uh, okay. Well, that's another $200. And what have we got here? A sugar donut? Okay. Again, to help with hunger, I assume. So, uh, yeah, I've got quite a lot of junk food with me. <laughs> sugar donuts, load of lollipops. Okay, where have the twins gone? Did we just go through the door? Let's try it. Uh, no, it's not locked. Okay. <laughs> Is this how we're going to start every day? No. Oh. Okay. Have I... I oh don't know. I don't have any weapons or anything. This is very, very strange so far. York! York! Who's that? Young me? Oh boy. Don't breathe. Hold your breath. They can't see you if you hold your breath. Oh, is that right? Okay. Hurry. Like this. Cover your mouth. Left control, eh? Okay. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Let's keep it held down. Wonder what would happen if I let go right now. Ha! <laughs> They're all practicing the limbo, aren't they? I don't really know why, but come on, keep moving, keep moving. Can't you just, like, kick him away and run for the door or something? Oh, keep going, keep going. That's it. You were pushing your luck a little bit there. Oh, can I let go now? I'm gonna let go. And we're still alive, so that's good. Well, we made it. Who are you? What? Was the lip sync meant to be completely out there? Probably was, to be honest. Well, maybe we'll find out at some point. Oh, so that was a dream, was it? That might explain a few things. A 
And that is one hell of a bed. Oh my god. That's a very nice room you're staying in. Zach, the symbolism in my dreams continues to intensify. A forest of red trees. A carpet with red leaves. A strange doll. And twin angels. Mm. But that child is what bothers me the most. Yeah, who is he? I swear I've seen him before. I just can't remember where. We'll figure it out. Well, it'll probably come back to me eventually. Yeah, probably. For now, we need coffee. Okay. Did you just have, like, one puff of the cigarette and then just put it out? What? Okay. Right. Let's head to the cafeteria, Zach. Of course. I hope they have some real coffee. I really need some coffee. <laughs> then we can head to the sheriff's office. There's a proper procedure for everything, right, Zach? There is indeed. Okay, so it looks like... There's a few things I can do, so let's have a look. I... I can go straight back to sleep? It does look comfortable enough, my god. Um... I don't think so. What's this? Oh, okay. To change my clothes? So the agent suit, workaholic suit, crimson suit. I think there was actually a few more options with the director's cut um, that I could actually choose from the main menu. But uh, yeah, let's just stick with the agent suit. What's this over here? Oh, it's a phone, of course. Right, so I can just use any phone to save, it looks like. Cool, cool. Uh... And that's going to be my toolbox, which I suppose has nothing inside it quite yet. Right, so, let's see. Uh, this door's not locked, let's try it. Ooh, so much tension when you don't know what's on the other side of the door. Oh, right. I can shave. Hmm, not bad. Now, I, I did receive a couple of comments asking me not to shower or shave. And see what happens. I'm just going to shave this once, okay? This might be the last time I do it. I think uh, flies are meant to surround him if he starts to smell and he's just sort of like unkept. Okay. You get $12 for shaving? Where's my $12 every time I shave? God damn. Okay. And this is where we shower, I suppose. Uh. It might help clear up our thoughts, but, uh, not right now. Looks like we want coffee more. What's through here? Just the toilet? Yeah? The sink? Fair enough. Okay, well, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I can't use anything in here, honestly. Right, yeah, maybe let's go get that coffee, shall we? So, this way, I suppose? Again, not locked. That's on you, though, really. You've probably got the key. Okay. Wow, this place is a bit of a maze. Ah, uh, shit. Well, I guess we should probably head in this direction. Can we try any of the other doors? Doesn't really look like it. Okay. Wow. Seriously, wow. This is a, a big, big place. History of Greenvale Industry, eh? What's this? Oh, again. Yeah, I, I think every single phone we can actually save. Vending machines? Uh, yeah, okay. Just if we need some snacks or drinks or something, I suppose. Through here, then. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Your breakfast is ready for you. Mrs. Back Problems? Oh no, no, it's, it's Polly Oxford, the hotel owner. Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then, thank you, Polly. I'm starving.
Here we go. She means business. Oh, what the fuck? Is everything all right, Mr. Morgan? <laughs> Let's admire. Yes, it's delicious, Polly. My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Yeah. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. That nobody can reach. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no, no one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh my, we're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. Oh dear. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, I suppose. I could just live on my pension, but I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. Oh dear. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly, I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. This is weird. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> The now biggest tell table me. ever. That wound on your face. What happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my. Well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. If you need anything, anything at all, just let me know. I'll help you out in any way I can. Zach, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea, I think. Say, Polly. Hopefully she can hear me. What can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called Greenvale. Uh -huh. It rains here quite often, but... It's a nice place, surrounded with nature. Okay. It was a big and prospering lumber town until not so long ago. We used to have a population of over 6,000 people. Less than a tenth of them left now. This hotel was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. Mm. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous too. The clock? Oh yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it too, I think. I look forward to hearing it then. Yeah, Anything I was just going to say. Anything you'd like to know about? Uh... The shops? Yeah, could come in handy. Yes, actually, Polly. Could you tell me about the shops around here? Shops? Well, there aren't many. It is a small town, after all. You can do most of your shopping at the Milk Barn convenience store. The couple who run it are a unique pair. I'm sure you'll get to like them. The A&G Diner is a great place to eat. Okay. They might be open even if my kitchen is closed. If you want to go to a bar, there are two. The Galaxy of Terror and the Sweary 65. Sweary 65 I don't care oh much for either of them. Bars are for the younger folk. We also have a gas stand, of course, the art gallery, and even a gunsmith. Ah. You should be able to find what you need. Thank you, Polly. Oh, he puts it in that little container. Well, Mr. Okay. Morgan, I'd better start cleaning up. You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I have to warn you, though. I am very particular about my coffee. <laughs> I bet you the are. The very best you have, please. I understand. I'll be right back with it. If it's not a damn fine cup of coffee, then it's not for me. Here we go. He's judging it already.
Uh, sure. What do you see? What's it telling you? Did you see that, Zack? No. Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. Never fails. Now then. <laughs> What's with the goofy smile? Let's get going. F. K. Someone's initials, maybe? I really want to pick up that medal. Oh, perfect. Okay, so... So that's topped up my uh, my hunger. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Another thirty dollars. Fantastic. And yes, I suppose the more of those I find, the more I could you know spend the money and everything. So that's great. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Can we just like freely explore? Ah. Uh, you forgot something? Uh, ah. Okay. Uh, well, let's see if I can remember that something before I go exploring. I guess. Maybe I just need to sort of get on with the job at hand. Oh, what's this? Uh, oh, more coffee? Uh, and find out what your fortune is for today. I get, well, yeah, okay. Let's have another cup, why not? Mmm. Unexpected trouble is coming your way. Lucky item is a lighter. There's always trouble heading my way in this job. Okay. But I'm always up for a little excitement, too. Same again? Yeah, okay, sure. Let's have even more caffeine. Haha. <laughs> I assume it's just going to tell me the same thing. If anything. Uh, Lucky Place is a theme park. There's a theme park here? There's no theme park in this town, though. No. Oh. All that good luck is just slipping away. Yeah. But I think I'll have a thrilling enough time right here anyway. Probably. Okay, so yeah, let's just leave it alone, I think, for now. Okay. Yeah, okay, what, $12 for sniffing coffee and fortune telling? $12 for shaving as well? My goodness. Alright, so, uh... I guess I'll be back here later when I'm a little bit more hungry. Okay, so we're leaving and what? We're going to the, the sheriff's office? Oh, that was it? That was the first day? Oh. Sure. Yeah, I cleared it. <laughs> Let's continue, I think. Yeah, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to end the video quite yet. Sure, why not? No? A police car. Is Emily around, or George, maybe? Her office is open from 9 to... Oh, okay. Huh. That's a key, right? That's for me. So we have King George to thank for preparing a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? <laughs> Let's take it for a spin. Not like the spin you had in your other car, okay? You don't want to do that again. I have to tell you, Zach, this place simply amazes me. The keys were left on the front hood. Hmm. And nobody stole the car. Values. This town has what the country needs. Values. <laughs> Let's head over to the sheriff's department. Okay. Wow. Uh, sure. Honking, boosting. Wipers, okay. Signals as well, headlights, side brake. Uh, is all of this really necessary? This seems pretty in-depth, honestly. And I've heard some things about the, uh, the control scheme for the, the driving, so... Here we go, I suppose. The master key, or the... The car key. Yeah, sure. Oh, I got a flare too. Anything else? Uh, okay. Right, so, C to cycle through that. Okay. Oh, bloody hell. Wait, why does the camera go that way when I turn? What the fuck? Okay, hang on, so... <laughs> fuck! 
Oh god, this is going to take a little bit of getting used to, I think. So that's the signal for the right. Signal for the left as well. Okay, sure. Okay, we've got headlights. Yep, sure. Okay, uh... Did I put my wipers on? Yes, I did. Yep. And I can honk the horn. Fantastic. Uh, who am I talking to? So, Zach. Oh, me. Right. About those bonus features in DVDs nowadays. Uh, yeah. You know, the ones from the 80s have almost no bonus material. Even if they do, it's a trailer and the visual quality is pretty bad. Right. Well, that visual quality is a good reminder of those days. So many new audio and visual appliances were coming out back then. <laughs> Do you remember the first video deck we bought? I don't. We bought it to record one of the Star Wars movies on TV. Oh. And remember when that video store opened, we spent hours there. Just trying to find a good movie to rent. There weren't that many to choose from back then. I remember renting some really bad ones after reading those back cover taglines. Hey, remember? Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, <laughs> filmed in 1978. Produced, directed, written, and edited by John DeBello. It was really awful, but for some reason I still remember it pretty well. It had so many sequels, and the original was re-released in 95. The 87-minute long theatrical release bumped up to a whopping 90 minutes. But that was around the time I joined the Bureau. I never have a chance to see it. Aww. I know, Zach. Once this case is over, we can watch it together. Yeah, there you we go. can buy a copy on the internet pretty easily. <laughs> Probably. Here we are. Bloody hell. Okay, I think I'm getting used to the driving. It's a little awkward. That's one fine building for such a small town. Hmm. The exterior woodwork is spectacular. Don't you agree, Zach? Time to say hello to Naomi and George, or uh, Emily and George, I suppose. Who's that? Oh, that was the guy that was crying in that beginning cutscene. Right? <sighs> At the bar? Uh, uh... Oh, here he comes. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, Agent Morgan. We've been expecting you. Oh, I'm Thomas McLean, Tom, the sheriff's right. assistant. He tried to sort out my car? Or he was going to. I, uh, I guess it didn't go too well. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please just call me York. It's what everyone else calls me. Very well then, Agent Agent York. I believe I owe you a thank you for retrieving my belongings from my car. Oh, right, yeah. Thanks. Oh, no, no. Just doing my job. I just... Well, I want to help do everything I can to help the investigation. I just can't believe Anna was murdered. She was such a bright and lovely girl. Did you know her well? Well, no, not really. But it's a very small town. I'm sorry. It's just that this is the first really big case I've ever seen. I understand. Just try to relax. Can I have a look at Anna's file now? Y yes, of course. The sheriff told me to let you through to the meeting room, but I've lost the key to the cabinet where the files are. Oh. Why don't you take a look around while I go look for it? Okay. Oh. Let me know when things are ready. Wait, so he's going to look for it, not me? Wow, that's very strange. Zach, Thomas appears to be the kind and sensitive type, totally at odds with the monarch. Almost a good setting for a cartoon. <laughs> that nice wry smile at the end. He's enjoying himself. Uh, right, okay, so yeah, let's see if we can get acquainted with the place. Again, somewhere to save. I probably should, but not quite yet. Can we go through here? That will be a no. Uh, conference room? Nope, okay. Who's that guy? Maybe I should say hi. Uh, this person probably has nothing to do with the investigation. Hmm. I think he did it, to be perfectly honest. What's that? Number four, George is wandering around in that room over there, I suppose. Hang on, let... Have we got a map of this area? I do. Oh, oh, I see. George is there, along with something else that sort of vaguely looks like a Game Boy SP. 
Sure, all right. So, fire exit. Can we? I can't leave now. No, okay, sure, sure, sure. Men, women. We can't check out the toilets? Oh, what about this one? Alrighty. Let's see what we find. Ah, okay. Doesn't look like there's a great deal to interact with here apart from the television. Check the weather? Yeah, why not? Okay. $14 for checking the weather, my goodness. Okay, time to leave. Uh, maybe next let's check out the kitchen room. I noticed that while I was talking with Tom. Oh, Emily's over there as well, is she? Okay. Alright, yep. Yeah. Hard at work. Uh, yeah. Let's say hi, if possible. Hi. She's got her hands full, okay. You don't think that's a good idea? No? He lost the key to the cabinet with the files. Right. Let's hope it doesn't. Okay, yeah, that's info gathering, I suppose. Right, so, George, what, what is that symbol next to you? Uh, George, do you work out every day? Of course, Agent Morgan. Exercise keeps me healthy. Okay. I haven't missed a day since I started in high school. Now, that's impressive. Remind me to get more exercise, Zach. Do you always do it but while I looking over that guy's shoulder? I routine today without Arnold. I haven't seen Arnold around since... Yesterday. Arnold. What? Arnold? He's a training buddy of mine. His partner Sylvester misses him too. If you see Arnold around, let me know, will ya? Can't finish my workout menu without him. Okay. Sylvester Stallone. Swarshnagger. I'll keep an eye out for him. Maybe. Oh? Lost Arnold. Uh, yeah, okay, so what's this? Number four is- Oh, wait. Yeah, view the list. I think this actually might be like a side mission or something? I did- Yes. George has lost his beloved Arnold somewhere in the sheriff's office. He can't train without him. Find what he's looking for and get it back to him. Help him get his groove back. Right, so that's what that symbol was. It was like a side quest kind of thing. Got ya. Okay. I will see if I can find Arnold, I suppose. Right. The joy of small towns. Um. Yeah. Yeah, so let's um let's go back through here. I actually did want to check out the kitchen and everywhere else here if possible. So yeah, the kitchen. Not locked. Let's go in. Very strange game. Very strange, but intriguing. And to be honest, I do want to solve the case. What's this? Uh okay. Wait, what's that, though? A dumbbell? Zack. We found Arnold. Oh, that's Arnold! I see, Arnold, yes. Let's get him back to George. I guess it's a cute name for a dumbbell. I guess so. So I don't need to find Sylvester as well. He's already got that one, right? Okay. And what else is this? I can shave again? I guess any sink will do. What's this? Gray, gray squirrel keys. It belongs to the sheriff's office. Oh. Oh, are these the missing keys? Could be, I suppose. Yeah, maybe that's what Tom's looking for. Open it? Yeah. What's inside? It's a turkey sandwich. Oh, it's the card of a turkey sandwich, not the actual thing. But there you go, another $200. Not too bad. The boiler room? Can't access it. Okay. Um, well, yeah, let's see if I can return Arnold. Maybe I'll get some more money for completing the side quest or, or something like that. So... Back in the office. He's probably in the adjoining room, right? Let's see. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Doing some more squats by the looks of it. 
<laughs> uh, yes, there you go. Got your dumbbell. George, I found Arnold. Really? Yes. He was a bit hard-headed, but I got him to come back. There you go. The way he just handed that over, I don't think it was that heavy. Oh, <laughs> Arnold. Well done, Agent Morgan. <laughs> now I can work out using my normal workout menu. Good to hear that. Yeah, good for you. Uh, here's a little something to show you my appreciation. Oh? What's it going to be? Oh, Arnold and Sylvester. Oh, well, I suppose another trading card means another so $200. That makes us even. I don't owe you anything, and you don't owe me anything. No changes to how we work together. Just bear that in mind. Bloody hell. Zack? Turbo reps. He needs some friends who aren't so dumb. <laughs> well, that was an easy side mission. Right, yeah. Another $200. Right, what else have we got through here? Let's observe all his trophies, shall we? All those diplomas and trophies. Is it really proof of his competence or just a way to show off? Eh, maybe a little bit of both. Zack, look at this. Is that? Oh, now this is something special. I can't see it. You're in the way. It's the epitome of the old Frontier Sheriff's Office. Oh. It's perfect. A stuffed deer's head on the wall. A flag, a hunting rifle. A hunting rifle. Amazing. You'd never see a hunting rifle on the wall of a police department in the city. That's just amazing. Wonder if the sheriff would ever let me shoot it. <laughs> Is that on your bucket list? Can we maybe get it off the wall? I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe if we keep getting in his good books, he'll allow us to pull it off the wall and give it a go. I don't know. I think we sort of started off on the wrong foot based on the, uh, the end of the first video, but... Since I returned, Arnold, uh, I don't know, maybe things are looking up. Right. Emily? You're kind of in the way because I can't get to the door. There we go. Right, I need to find Tom because I think I found the keys. Uh, so, yeah, let's see. We didn't try this, did we? No, the locker room. Let's go in. I don't know what I was expecting with this game. But it wasn't this, precisely. There's that, okay, toolbox, toolbox and suitcase again. And, uh, long-tailed flying squirrel keys. There's more? Okay. How many sets of keys are there? Maybe it's some sort of puzzle. George's locker, oh. Let's see what's inside. Sweet fuck all by the looks of it, okay. And I think that's pretty much that. Okay, well. Moving on. Over here. The material room? Okay. Yeah. Looks like this is where we need to go. Ah, there he is. Right. Well, I think I might have the keys. I don't know. Let's see. Long tail, grey, or I can just give him the master key, the, the car key. Uh, let's try grey squirrel keys. You found the key. Maybe? Is this the one you were looking for? Uh. Uh, no. Oh. This is a grey squirrel. Sorry, that's not the key. Okay. Nothing particularly special about the gray squirrel, I'm afraid. You can find them in the US, Canada, and in England, too. A gray squirrel. What was I thinking? Yeah, what was I thinking? But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. Oh, are we? Oh, I didn't know. Maybe you should have fucking told me. A southern flying... Okay, right, right. So what do we got here? So, uh, yeah, sure. Oh, I see it comes out and reveals nothing. <laughs> There's nothing being kept in there. What about in here? I guess this small town doesn't have a lot of cases or evidence or a lot of files. 
Oh, there's some stuff over here, I guess, maybe. Uh, different years. Uh, that's about it. Okay, right, uh, well... I need to find some more keys, don't I? So let's keep exploring the Sheriff's Office. Storage? Sure. Okay. So this is storage. This isn't like the evidence locker or anything like that. Ah, what have we got here? Pointy-tailed flying squirrel keys. Well, well, we might be on the right lines with that, I don't know. A raincoat? Doesn't look like it's been used much, even though it rains here pretty often. What waste of nice fabric, eh, Zach? All right, yeah. I, I do like the uh, the background jazz every time he talk, or talks to himself or talks to Zach. And uh, he's always got his finger, like, poking his chest or his, uh, his temple. He's a strange fellow. He really is. Right. Oh, great. Fantastic. More money just for observation. So have I got my... Oh, I've still got the mission knife and everything. Fantastic. Steel pipe, yep. Still got the gun? Okay. Let's go in. <laughs> Looking very threatening. Okay. Ah, oh, we got the cells down here, have we? Can we go in? Looks like it. Hello? Is it even in use? Doesn't seem like it. No, maybe not. Yep, yeah, okay, so we got the cells here. Oh, there's something there. Can I...? Okay, let's have a look. And it locked behind me, and that's a game over. No? Okay. Oh, I can sleep here? I don't think that's wise. No, I've got work to do. I can sleep later. Back at the hotel, preferably. Just sleeping again, I suppose. Oh, there's someone here. Hmm. That would mean the end of our little vacation. Some- oh, okay, well, I'm definitely going in there. I want the honor, and I want whatever that might be in the corner. Okay. Curvy tail flying sc oh, okay. That could be the one, possibly? There's a door here? Seems a bit strange for a cell, but... okay. Hmm. And what else have we got? Just a couple more. Just somewhere else to sleep. And somebody's already in there. Okay, well. Uh, thanks for letting me check around, officer. What's at the end of this corridor here? Let's go find out. Right, so, uh, would anyone protest if I just started shooting boxes? Apparently not. And the next one- Oh shit! Oh, there are things in boxes occasionally! Good to know! Very good to Oh shit, look at that. Okay, so that's what, honor? Only five dollars worth, but still. Oh, ten millimeter auto bullets? Auto- wait. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to get some sort of, you know, different gun at some point. Oh, and speaking of guns, the shooting range! I guess I could probably do something with this. Oh yeah, check this out. Oh, striped squirrel keys? How many fucking keys have you got? Why are they all squirrels? Maybe just add a tag that says what they do, which room they go to. Okay, right, uh... I assume one of the sets of keys that I've got is probably going to be the one that Tom's looking for. So let's go back to him and let's just give him all the keys and he can figure it out. <laughs> Still in here, I assume? Yeah, looks like it. 
Okay? Let's try this again. Well, you tell me, I suppose. I've got a lot more choices. Pointy-tailed, long-tailed, striped, curvy-tailed. Let's try curvy-tailed. You found the key. Maybe. That's the right one? Oh, he didn't say that last time. Maybe that is the right one. Ah, uh, yeah, I think so. Yes, a southern flying squirrel. Thank you so much. No problem. I'll bring the files right in, so please go to the meeting room. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. He's so happy with himself. Well, Zach, we just got here and we've cracked a big case already. <laughs> ah, here we go then. The victim's name was Anna Graham. Age 18, she just recently graduated from high school this year. Her dream was to move out to the city and become a model. But for the time being, she was working in the A&G diner here in town. She lived with her mother, Sally. Anna's father died in an accident in the lumber mill when she was a child. Her mother is unemployed and lives on the insurance money from her husband's accident. After all, it's a small town with a low cost of living. Financially, they seem to get by fine, and they led normal lives. A normal life is exactly what a curious teenager doesn't want. It's all starting to make sense, Zach. City folk, huh? No. No, I take that back. All of them can't be as bad as him. And some should have better manners. Huh. This is a good biscuit. <laughs> I've never tasted a biscuit this delicious. Where in town can I get these? Well, actually... I... Well... I... I baked them myself. Well done, Tom. Mm, that's amazing. What are you doing in law enforcement? I'm very particular about biscuits, I'll have you know. The balance of milk and butter you've achieved here? Oh, my. Agent Morgan, the autopsy's ready. Oh? You are welcome to accompany me to the Greenvale General Hospital. Emily, you come too. Thomas, stay here and tidy up these files. Y yes sir. We're going to use the car outside. Let's get going. Which one? My one? You might think this is just a small town police investigation, but our inspections are thorough and solid. I'm hoping you won't slow us down. <laughs> Just keep holding that biscuit. God, this is so odd. So very, very odd. I feel like I want to watch season one of Twin Peaks and then just sort of compare with the game and see if maybe David Lynch has a case to sue. But uh, yeah, okay. A little bit more, yep. Okay, just under 2.5 grand, that's not bad. Uh, yeah, okay, let's continue playing. Let's see if we can maybe get to the hospital. I'm kind of curious as to if I'm going to be driving or not. Wait, fishing rod to go fishing? What? There's everything in this game. The Greenvale General Hospital is down the road by the lake. It's too far to walk. Come on, get in the car. If I'm riding in a car, George, I prefer to be the driver. Can you provide a car for me? What are you talking about? You don't even know how to get there. Which is another good reason for me to drive, George. I need to learn my way around town. <laughs> True, I guess. Oh, man. Very well. Then I'll ride with you. I want to keep an eye on you. I bet you do. Fair enough. You gonna bring Arnold and Sylvester? Just or? one thing, Agent Morgan. Your involvement in this case is limited. That means you don't have to learn your way around town. Ah. George, we'd better get moving. The hospital closes at 2100. How long was I in the office? Probably quite a long time, actually. Oh, it's only 1033. What the fuck? Uh, yes. Okay, so... Can we just talk? Right. Yes, we do. Emily, anything to say? <laughs> okay, just a slightly higher-pitched noise there. Uh, yeah. To the hospital then, right. Oh. 
Got my coat on automatically. Not bad, eh? Agent Morgan, get us there quickly, but drive within the speed limit. I don't Just know because if that's you have doable. a badge doesn't mean you can drive like a maniac. George, what are you, his mother? Maybe. We just need to get the autopsy results. Agent York isn't accustomed to the town yet. Give him a little slack. <sighs> well then, Agent York, let's get going. Sure, sounds good. It does. Okay, so let's see. Backing up. Okay. Backing up straight onto the fucking road, because that's the way I drive, apparently. Here we go. And I'm going to crash into someone. No, no, I'm fine. Right, headlights probably should be on. Looks like we're going that way. So, can we just check the map? Uh, yeah, okay. Looks like I'm talking, so yeah, let's talk. Agent Morgan, I can't help noticing you prefer to work alone. Most of the time, yes. Don't you get lonely, flying all over the country alone? I must say, I've never felt lonely. Are you married? Unfortunately, relationships and I are fleeting strangers. I don't get on very well with women, you might be surprised to hear. That's because you're young. You notice things like that at my age. You have to treat women carefully, like a thin crystal wine glass. If you don't, they can cut scars on your face, just like yours, right? George, is this an interrogation? <laughs> I see you're a seasoned professional. Uh, but let's not talk about my scar. It was caused by a problematic woman. Well, she got you good. Terribly good. It'll fade away, and nobody will notice it in a week. A week? It's not that light of a wound. I may have missed the turning, so I don't know. Emily, tell me, is there really a need for a full-time sheriff in a small town like this? I'm sure it is Where small to your city eyes, but any gathering of people leads to all kinds of problems. Fights, runaways, stray pets. Ah, uh, I did, yes. I'm sorry, I was looking for a turning that didn't exist. Right, yes, okay, so this obviously isn't the way. Maybe the next right? Can I actually have a look at the, the proper map, or is that as good as we get? I think that might be as good as we get, unfortunately. Ah, oh, I, I think I interrupted the conversation as well. And I can't talk anymore. Oh well, okay. Right, so I noticed there is some sort of, um, you know, gauges for how damaged the car is and the, the gas as well. That's not going to go anywhere, is it? Oh, I see. Wait, is that a tr I think I see a trading card. Is that what that is? Well, we're in the middle of a homicide investigation. Keep your mind on the matter at hand. He's right, Agent York. You still don't know your way around. Concentrate uh, on driving us to the hospital. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. But there's some, uh, there's some trading cards around here, apparently. Oh, oh, it was just a little ding. It was just a little ding. Don't worry about it, guys. Can I get out now and... Yep. <laughs> I found the hospital, guys. All right, you wait there. I've got important work to do. If you're wandering off, then we'll go on ahead. We don't have time to mess around. Ah, oh, but just... Okay, just, I'll meet up with you later. Just a little hey, bit of messing around. The hospital closes at 2100. Please make it inside before then. I, I'm just going to be like five seconds. I... Ah. Oh, I just wanted the extra $200. That was all. Rosy Lips Gina? Okay. I guess we're going to meet her at some point. So I just... Abandoned them and they abandoned me? Okay, right. Well, let's actually see if we can get to the hospital by ourselves. I'm sure it's not too difficult, is it? It's doable. Okay, this way. Yep. It, I, I can't get over how clunky the driving controls are. Especially with the combination of the camera moving in the opposite direction that you want it to all the time. It's very strange. This is looking more promising. Yes, okay. I guess I'm talking with myself. Speaking of 80s movies, one jewel in the rough springs to mind. Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? No, I don't. Back in 83, directed by Douglas McCown. Right, it was filmed pretty cheap, but still it was pretty good. 
Okay. The monster design with the mouth crammed full of teeth. I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? But I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. Oh, here we are. They said the staff for the sequel was totally different from the original. H for hospital or helipad. The turned out. You know, the monster in that one responded to sound. Wait, Zach. Sounds a lot like the movie Tremors. Mm. I think that one was back in 89, directed by Ron Underwood. Tremors is a now good that one. That was a great role for Kevin Bacon. Masterpiece. <laughs> Zach, that one had sequels like crazy. I remember there was a fourth one. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I think there's a fifth Zach, now. Here. Let's continue our chat later. Right. So, uh, did they make it, or am I going to be waiting around for a while? I probably shouldn't have abandoned them to go for a trading card. I could have picked Agent Morgan. Have you no respect for rules and protocol? We were waiting for you, and now you try to go in by yourself. I'm sorry. Oh, George. I didn't see you in the parking lot, so I thought I'd wait inside. Oh boy. Just okay. watch it from now on. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. I've only I been here like a day, and I'm already making mistakes. People who think that they're above the rules. And I'm sure I've made this point clear by now. Calm down, George. He probably just got lost on his way here and rushed in. Right, Agent York? Right. Thanks, Naomi. Let's go inside, then. She's got my back. Right, yeah, the autopsy results. Hello, Sheriff. Freckly Fiona? Okay. Is that your Christian name? Hi there, Fiona. We're here to see Usha. Do you know where he is? I think Dr. Johnson is in the computer room. Okay. A computer room? In a hospital? <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. FBI agent. The computer room is where our employees share a computer. Very nice to meet you, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I think she knows. But how did you know I was FBI? Yeah. <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. <laughs> Could have been CIA, NSA. Besides, that scar on your face is the biggest rumor in town. Ah. Rumors get exaggerated as they spread, even in the countryside. What's that you're reading, if I may ask? Liar's House. Probably better than Wooden House. You haven't heard of this yet? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the US, a small traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. A peaceful, traditional place. However, that peaceful town is shattered by a terrible crime. The murder of a local girl. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. But everyone feels the seditious, heinous, evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, don't say that. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. With Anna dead and all... Don't worry. Books are written to entertain, and it's good you're enjoying it. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a real world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. Thank you, Agent York. Okay. Right. So I suppose I need to find this computer room, do I? Again, do we have a map of the place? Looks like there was one on the wall, but... Oh, perfect, okay. Oh, that's where we're going, is it? Okay. Uh... So, through the door, I suppose. That one's locked. Places to sleep. Okay. Yeah, big place. So, if I go to side mission. Right, so four's the one we've got. How many side missions are there? 50? Oh my god. Holy shit. Okay, well, I don't know if I'll be doing all of them. Probably not. I'll, uh,. See what I bump into, I suppose. Right, so I, I think, yeah, I want to go this way. And then it was around here. Yeah, this one. And it's not locked. Doesn't look like it. We couldn't find him. Hmm. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? There's a message on the computer. And a card key already set in place. Oh? 
The king passes the rook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn along for the queen. What does that all mean? It's a simple puzzle. Zach, let's take him up on his challenge. You can do this, right? Maybe, yeah. I'll give it a go, I suppose. Uh, yeah, okay. So we got the king passes the rook uh, and meets the bishop. Uh, that will be the knight takes the pawn to the queen. Checkmate. Somehow. Uh, yes. <laughs> Did that work? The doctor awaits below with the deceased. Okay. Another code? But there's nowhere to insert a password. Or well, is he More just downstairs games. in the morgue or something? I'm going to get Fiona to call Usha up here right now. No need, George. The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. This is not the time to be joking around, Agent Morgan. Dr. Usha is below with the deceased. With Anna. Yeah. Below being underground, I take it. I assume. Simple. Simple. Well, there you go, he's got the card. Then it's time to meet the mischievous architect of this little game. <laughs> nah. Why does he have to be a mischievous architect? Can't he just be like a, a doctor? Nothing simple, is it? Uh, yes, okay, so... 88 yards in that direction. Let's go, guys. Right, so... Back the way I came. Across to the other side. I can't get over how strange this game feels. I haven't gotten used to it yet. It feels like a first draft or something, you know? It feels like an idea. An idea that probably shouldn't have been brought to life, but has anyway. Oh. Oh, that's, that's, that's underground, is it? Okay, well, let's see. Uh, have we got some stairs around here somewhere? Oh, yeah, it looks like we Yeah, there's stairs over there. At the end of the corridor, okay. Let's give that a try, shall we? So, round here, there's a door that's locked to my left. I'm noticing these doors with the Do Not Enter signs that... Why are they part of the door? Can't they just be signs on the floor? <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Around here to the right. Ah, oh, there you go. That's where we use the keycard. And I think we're in. Perfect. Probably should be observing more, actually. Maybe I'll get some extra cash. Okay. Around here. This is looking fairly promising. Does that say dead room? I think that says dead room. Right. Oh boy, what am I going to find here? Hmm, maybe you really need to. What about this one? Okay, I guess maybe I need to come back here later on, and I probably do need to have a look at them. Locked? Looks like it's locked. That's our guy, though. Okay, let's try the next door down the hall. I think that's really where I was supposed to go. Okay, so yeah, over there. Along with... Oh, another place to save. Another medal. Nice. And I could always get a snack. <laughs> Just out of interest, how is my hunger? Uh, so what, I go, I think I come back, and then look at that, okay. Ah, uh, it's still pretty good. Yeah, it's only 10.54 in the morning after all. I did have quite a nice breakfast, didn't I? Here we are. So this is Usher? Usher, 
Sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, you made it. Let's get started, shall we? <laughs> okay. This is Agent Morgan from the FBI. Hmm, nice to meet you. I'm Usher Johnson, the doctor in this hospital. And you're FBI the only one? Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Everyone calls me that. Very well, Agent York. Are you a forensic practitioner? Let's just say I've dealt with corpses before. That battle of wits, by the way. Did you create that yourself? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if our FBI agent could handle the task. <laughs> I see. Well, it was pretty fun. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Maybe we should be focusing on Anna. Just a thought. We don't have much time. <laughs> We need those autopsy results. Yes, we do. <laughs> Next time, Why? try challenging us without obstructing an investigation. You've angered the monarch. No. Wouldn't want that to happen. Another way to anger him is leave him outside in the rain. From the onset of rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, the time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. Uh, that's still quite early for such a crime to take place. Right. Note that there are two exterior wounds, pressure marks around the neck, and a long cut running from chest to abdomen. Blood marks on her right hand tell us she was gripping something round in her right hand. Yep, you have a hand. Her skull is also fractured, but that is unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Okay. Now, I first thought death by suffocation, due to the marks on her neck. But after further investigation, I now have a different conclusion. Which is? The direct cause of death was loss of blood from the wound. Right. Which means? She was cut up while she was still alive. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. It was inserted beneath the sternum and then quickly sliced downwards. The excessive loss of blood from her internal organs is what actually killed her. Her nails are clean, and with no skin cells from the attacker. So she didn't fight back? She also doesn't appear to have been bound, nor badly beaten. Hmm. She was apparently killed without resistance. The most tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. Well, yeah, I guess. The perpetrator cut out Anna's tongue. Ah, I see. Well, I believe she was drugged first to phase her consciousness, and then the killer killed her. As killers do. Now, the killer most likely has a deep, traumatized past concerning women. He probably cannot converse with them normally. Cutting out the tongue suggests a very lonely individual. This music does not Either suit this that scene. Or a truly hardcore sadist. He must get off on watching women suffer, especially when they can't answer back. Now, he watched as the blood pumped from her body, as she gradually grew cold. Uh, a case in Seattle in 1985 was much like. Usher, please, limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profiling is my job. Right. This is true. You're wrong, also. Anna died fully, deeply, painfully aware of what was happening to her. But, uh... How'd you figure that? Tell me, what time did it stop raining on the night Anna was killed? Uh, just before I went to bed, right after the movie on TV ended, so around 1 a.m. What movie was it? An American Werewolf in London. 
Uh, directed by John Landis, 1981. <laughs> so the rain stopped, accompanied by the ending song, Blue Moon. George, would you mind if I examined Anna myself? What more do you hope to find? Well, I guess we'll see. I'm sure I mentioned that I have a personal interest in cases like these. Oh, okay. Uh, that's not Anna, so... Uh, here we are. Uh, oh, well, that's... They're Anna's feet, so observe the feet. Anna's body is lying... It certainly is lying on the table, you're right. Okay. The hand? Oh, yeah, there's some sort of impression there, right? She was holding something in her hand, but it was removed about... Yeah, six hours after death. The object was circular with a relief shape like a piece mark. Yeah, I can see that. Almost looks like a baseball or something, but it's you know, far too small. Fake fingernails? Okay. There she is. Evaporated liquid around the eyes. She must have cried before she was murdered. No scratches or bruises or anything. The tongue's been removed. Look at the edge of the stump. Oh. <laughs> Can't stop thinking about coffee. From her lack of resistance, I'd say that Anna's injuries happened very quickly. Unable to speak, she was then left to cry herself to death. Zack, it's all starting to come together. The perpetrator stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining. At the estimated time of her death, it was still raining but you can still see tear marks on her cheeks. Right. That means she was killed under a roof somewhere. Hmm. Under a cover, yeah. She was then carried into the woods after it stopped raining. Hmm. <clears throat> there, there's one other thing. Her tongue was removed with a very blunt knife. Hmm. In fact, it's more likely it was simply chopped off. Like the raincoat killer's oh, axe? Are you a passionate man? Well, not particularly, I mean, but I am man enough should the moment call for it. George, how about you? I'm very passionate, yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. George, the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about women. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of death. Oh. Teeth? Ah, the perpetrator bit off Anna's tongue. Lovely. <laughs> we'll never get a dental print from a wound like this. But this is still a big lead. <laughs> Gather around, everybody. Oh, boy. <laughs> Lovely sound. Jackpot sack. Wait. It's a shame, but our old time all American sightseeing tour just came to an end. That's another little this seed thing. This case is now under the jurisdiction of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. Huh. What in the hell do you mean, Agent Morgan? I know I said I was passionate, but you can't think I did this. That's not why I'm assuming command, George. You're a suspect just as much as every other passionate man on Earth. Let me show you something. Right, it's the same, isn't it? Yeah. No? Right. Okay. How many have you got? Quite a few. There you go. Amazing, huh? Yeah. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but most of the details are top secret. Oh. George, Emily, we should be going. No need to stay here any longer. Okay. I have to sign the release. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll go on ahead. I can't take it any longer down here. Bishop takes queen, his rook takes your queen, then your knight takes rook, and checkmate. Huh? 
<laughs> He's a real whiz kid, isn't he? Oh, gotta go check it now. My first victory in the Grandmaster ranking. Well, there you go. He's a genius. <laughs> Good old York. Uh, we've got more of that red ivy. Hmm? Oh dear. He didn't notice that before he took the cigarette out? Zack, they're here. Whoever they are. Right, okay, it looks like we might be needing to, uh, to use the gun again. Right, well, yeah, i tell you what, actually, seeing as we can use any phone to save, I am going to save. Thank you very much for watching Deadly Premonition Part 2. We've gotten to know a few more people around the town, we're actually sort of getting a lay of the land, we're getting used to the driving, and we are starting to try and solve the case. And we will continue to do so in Part 3. Thanks for watching, see you next time. And that is one hell of a bed, oh my god. You get $12 for shaving? Where's my $12 every time I shave? Here we go. She means business. Oh, what the fuck? Is that you're embarrassing me? So early in the day, too. Never fails. Now then. What's with the goofy smile? Let's get going. Let's take it for a spin. Not like the spin you had in your other car, okay? Okay. Wow. Uh, sure. This person probably has nothing to do with the investigation. Hmm. I think he did it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, George, do you work out every day? There you go. The way he just handed that over, I don't think it was that heavy. Let's go in. Looking very threatening. Oh, striped squirrel keys? How many fucking keys have you got? Why are they all squirrels? Wait, fishing rod to go fishing? What? But drive within the speed limit. I don't know if that's doable. Ah, uh, I did, yes. I'm sorry, I was looking for a turning that didn't exist. Right, so four's the one we've got. How many side missions are there? Fifty. Need those autopsy results. Yes, we do. <laughs> yep. You have a hand. Then the killer killed her. As killers do. Suggest a very lonely individual. This music does not Either suit this that, scene. Or a 